This is a 2002 Honda 250 EX. Bought for the kids and used by, well, used by no one for 10 years. These things definitely hold the Honda reputation of being ultra reliable and virtually maintenance free. Of course, nothing is actually maintenance free and this one has been sitting for legitimately 10 years. Not to mention those 10 years have been sitting outside, but at least under a tarp. It belongs to a good friend's coworker and after its 10 year hibernation, they pulled the tarp off and tried to start it. It's completely dead, it won't turn over with a jump and the thumb throttle is completely seized. Honda made the 250EX from 2001 to 2005. It's a shaft driven five speed semi-automatic clutch. These aren't the most exciting machines, but I literally couldn't think of a better starter bike and they make the perfect girlfriend quad. Sorry to all the guys that have these as their primary machine. It was also featured in the iconic video game ATV Off-Road Fury, which automatically makes this quad a legend. Thumbs up if you remember playing that game as a kid. All kidding aside though, these are ultra fun machines and it's definitely worth saving. In 2006, they updated the look of the machine and they added what was called a sport clutch, which enabled you to either use the semi-clutch or you could use a clutching system, which makes it a great learner's quad. This is actually one of the few remaining sport quads that you can still buy brand new. If you go to Honda's website, you can see they still have a 2021 model, only now it's called a TRX 250X. You can pick them up for around five grand, or you could buy a used Banshee for five grand. Up to you. I won't judge. Machines that have been sitting outside for years are always fun, and they always come with their fair share of surprises. Let's take a look at it and see if we can get this thing running. Doing something a little different today. I'm actually heading up north to pick up a buddy of mine's four-wheeler. Well, actually, it's not my buddy's four-wheeler. It's actually his boss's four-wheeler, but um, he needs some work done on it, so I'm heading up there to pick it up. I think it's a 250 EX, nothing crazy, but we'll see. A lot of times when people have quads and dirt bikes, they think it's one thing and then it's something else when I get there, so we'll find out. All right, so we already got it loaded up. It's an O2 250 EX, really was a 250 EX. You can see how low the hours are just by the tires. Unfortunately, this one's dry rotted real bad. You can see the exhaust still. It's really clean. So it hasn't been running in what, Matt? I'd say probably close to 10 years. 10 years this thing hasn't been running. So there was nothing wrong with it to begin with. So we'll give it a tune up, see if we can get it going. All right, let's get this puppy on out of here. Look at this thing. Like I was saying before, just the knobby, as you can tell, this thing's got very low hours. Very, very low hours. It's been sitting outside for 10 years. So if it was inside, this thing would probably look brand new. So let's see. Where the hell is the seat release on this? Ah. Let's see what the hell it looks like under here, if there's any. Oh, squirrel. Oh yeah. So what I plan to do with this is just real basic stuff. I'm probably just gonna do a tune-up. Usually what I do with something like this is I go over the bike, see what it needs, or at least what I think it needs, and then call the owner and you know, kind of give them a basic idea of the money that needs to go into it to get it running and then take it from there. You know, I'll order my parts. Probably it's just gonna be spark plug, oil change, air filter, you know, clean out all this varmint shit. Oh my God. Dude, there's a snake in there. Holy shit, and it's alive. Holy shit. <laughs> Check that out. Oh my God. That is crazy. Damn. So that'll be one of the things I do is getting rid of that snake. Holy shit, I was not expecting that. And uh, on top of that, where was I? Spark plug, air filter, battery, and uh, clean the carb out. The carb is definitely gonna need to be cleaned. And he said even when it was brand new under warranty, they were having issues with it starting cold. Not even when it's cold out, just when the bike's not warm. So I have a feeling that the pilot jet needs to be up. So once I get everything running, I'll see how it starts. And then we'll see about maybe jetting it. Maybe it'll run really well, who the hell knows. So let's take it from there. This 
the snake will not leave this quad. Like I'm some kind of nature boy. Come on. Oh, get the fuck out of there, dude. Where the hell's he going? Just get out of here, bro. Just go, I'm not gonna hurt you. Leave. Go into the bushes. Yes, work your way out of here. No. Onto the ground. Yes. Dude, just get out of here. There you go. No, away from the quad. Quad's no longer home. Go out into the bushes. Just fine. Yes. Yes. Home. Jesus. I fucking hate snakes. Okay, now that I got rid of that snake, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for today. I'm going to clean all this jazz out here, maybe find some more snakes and stuff. And I'm just gonna look up all the parts and stuff. We'll see what the price is gonna be just for that stuff, because it's gonna need that anyway. And the other thing is, it's gonna need tires. So you can see the dry rod, it sucks because these tires have such low wear. I think I have hole shots in the back on rims though, that'll fit this. So basically it's just gonna be like a general tune-up. Like I said, this thing has been sitting for 10 years. Before there was a snake living under the seat and you know, that's what happens when you let things sit for 10 years. It was outside, it was covered, but you know, it's just 10 years of sitting kind of caught up with it. So we're gonna be doing a basic tune-up. I'm gonna clean this thing up a little bit. You can see like the spark plug wire, like a hornet tried to make a, a nest in there or something. So we'll clean that out. I have my parts right here. There's a new battery in here. This I think is the filter, carb kit, spark plug, and then this big box here. I know it's exciting and everything, but it's just a side panel that's been missing on the quad. So that's uh, all the parts really we need and plus oil. So first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of clean up the quad a little bit. It's not gonna be like a crazy detail. Just get it nice and clean because I don't like working on dirty things and it's always nice to give back a quad to a customer, you know, nice and clean. So I got this thing cleaned up for the most part. It's pretty crazy how clean this got. It's just the low hours. What I'm gonna do is just real quick before I put my cleaning stuff away, I'm gonna take this battery out of here just so that I can clean a little bit better in here. That battery's getting replaced anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out now. It's super easy. It's just four bolts. You gotta take off this retainer thing. Got one, another one back here. And you gotta take off your terminals as well. And the battery pulls right out. New one drops right in. I'm not gonna put the new one in right away. I just wanna get this one out of here so we can clean it. So that's all cleaned out in there. I didn't go crazy with it, but you can see how easily that cleaned up. Now, just for the heck of it, before I pull this in the shop, I want to pull this cover off. I'm curious what it looks like under here. That's where the air filter is, just because there could be like rats and stuff in there. So if it's dirty, I might as well open that up now while I got my cleaning stuff out. So let's see what it looks like. So this is amazing. It's hard to believe that this filter is this clean. And usually something gets into these filter boxes and eats the filter or makes a nest out of them, which is crazy. This filter feels like it's okay. I'm still gonna put the new filter in, only because this thing is still the original filter, I'm pretty sure. So it's from O2, and the materials can break down. They kind of degrade. You know, I have the new filter, I might as well put it in there. I'll keep this one with the quad and give it to the owner. In case he gets that other one dirty, you know, he might be able to reuse this one. But it's better safe than sorry, I put a new filter in there. This one's still really old. So I got that filter out of there, and our carb is right here. So I want to get our carb out of there so we can clean it. Definitely needs to be cleaned. Believe it or not, it looks like the only thing holding this air box in place are these two pins. So I'm going to pull those out. And then of course you have our breather tube, which is hooked up down here. But as long as I can move this air box this way a little bit, then I can get the carb out. And it looks like there's two small bolts that hold the carb onto the motor. Before I get to the carb, I want to clean out the spark plug boot. There's a hornet's nest or something in there. So I clean that out thoroughly.
pulled the spark plug and I put a little bit of WD-40 right down in the cylinder because this engine hasn't turned over in legitimately 10 years. So I'd like to get those rings soaking in oil before we just start cranking away at this thing. And one last thing before we get to the carb, I want to change the fluids out in this machine. So I want to change the engine oil and I'm also going to do the rear differential fluid. The 250EX is actually a shaft driven quad, so there's no chain. You have the rear differential and I'm going to show you how to change that out right now. I just wanted to do a quick video showing how to change the differential fluid in this just because it's kind of weird. You know, it'd be nice if there was, you know, directions on how to do it, especially because it's a quad that usually younger people have. A lot of kids don't know how to do this stuff. So I thought I'd just go over it. It's super simple. There's really only three bolts you need to worry about. You have your fill hole right here. Right here is your inspection hole. So you pull that out and then when you're filling up the new oil, as soon as it starts seeping out of this hole, you know you're topped off. And then you have your drain bolt, which is on the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see it under there, but it's this bigger hole. Right here is where the drain hole is. So that's where you drain your fluid. So that's what we'll do first. So this is pretty much everything right here. We have our wrenches, 17 millimeter, 10 millimeter. And then this here is just a regular ratchet wrench with a 17 and a 10. The one, a hole on the bottom, the drain bolt, um, you kind of have to use a ratchet unless maybe the skid plate's off and an extension would work well too. And then of course we have a drain pan. You don't have to have this. You can use any kind of, you know, old can or, you know, milk jug or something cut in half to just to catch your fluid or let it run on the driveway, whatever. Of course, your fluid, what we're going to be using today is 8890. So first things first, before you even get started, you just want to make sure that your four wheeler is on an even surface so that you get good drainage when you unplug your drain bolt. All right guys, so now that we have our drain plug all plugged up, we're just gonna fill it up with fluid. I have my drain pan set underneath the seep hole, so if it comes out and it's runny, you know, we'll catch all that stuff and I just have a rag handy. So we're just gonna go ahead and start filling it up and take your time here. This really doesn't take much oil and if you go crazy with it, as soon as it tops off, it's gonna start pouring out like crazy. So just slowly fill it up so that you don't spill too much. So there it is, you can see it coming out the seep hole. So now that this is done seeping, just wipe off any excess oil, then take your bolt, don't forget your washer, pop that in there. Just like with that bottom bolt, just snug it up. If you really want to torque them, these go to 9 foot pounds. Put our fill bolt back on, Put our same thing, just snug it. That's good right there, and we're done. Okay, now that those things are done, let's get the airbox off. Unfortunately, as I was taking this off, I did notice that the throttle was completely stuck. You couldn't even move the thumb throttle at all. In fact, I ended up having to yank out the slide from the carb body because there was so much corrosion and buildup on it. But luckily, it did come out, and I think we can still save it. So I was pulling this carb off, and I went to take the slide out, and this thing was solid in there, and I'm thinking that the carb was completely trashed. I've seen carburetors that get you know, completely corroded and you really just need a new carb. But luckily I tugged it a couple times and it came out. You can see some buildup and stuff on there, but should be able to clean that stuff off. It doesn't look too bad. We'll have to see what it looks like when I pull off the bowl. Got this carb kit here. See, I'll rebuild the carb, get it back on there. Let's get this thing running. Yeah, I'd uh, say this thing needs the carb cleaned. All right guys, so I got that crappy carb in the ultrasonic cleaner here. That thing is tearing shit up right now. Basically just waiting for that. The rest of the stuff on the quad is pretty much done. Gonna be throwing a new battery in, put new oil in it, put a new spark plug in it. And uh, the gas tank was empty already, so I'll be throwing some new gas in and That'll pretty much be it. It should be ready to go. I have the new side piece to go on. And I just have to throw on the 450R tires that I have sitting over here. These should bolt right up. They have some pretty decent hole shots on them. Same size rims and stuff. So they'll fit on there nicely. All right, so these things are done. Water looks pretty dirty. Yeah. 
I mean, it seems to have cleaned it somewhat. Probably have to scrub it. This actually looks pretty good. Hmm. I'm gonna run it through one more time, just for safe measure. And I wound up scraping a bunch of that dirt and stuff off. The rest should come out with another shot in the ultrasonic cleaner. Brought the quad in because it was getting dark out. And I think in the meantime, I'm just gonna throw the battery in, switch these tires out, and then all I have to do is put the carb on and hopefully it starts up. So I just pulled this battery out that I'm putting in and I noticed this feature on it that I've never seen before. You press this button and it shows you your battery life. Voltage. And I guess that's how many days old it is. That's pretty cool though. It's called a Chrome Pro. Chrome's Pro. I don't know, pretty cool though. This thing came out really clean. I had to do a little bit of scrubbing, but that ultrasonic cleaner really cleans things up nice. All nice and clean. Slide. This thing's pretty much ready to go back on. I'm just having trouble getting this gasket to stay in the groove. It keeps popping off every time I try to put it back on. The new air filter's on there. I oiled it. This filter thing on the inside just does not want to go over this little ridge here. I've just been grappling with it. So I'm just gonna take care of those two things, throw the carburetor on, throw the air filter on, and it hopefully will fire right up. So this thing was a serious pain in the ass, but basically how I got it in there I took this hug, the one belt around the plastic was about the same diameter or circumference as the filter, and it's tapered. So I just kind of like laid that around that inner filter. That helped that little ridge kind of like slide past the filter and it popped right on. So sometimes the simplest crap can get the job done. I just got done flushing the gas tank. It was kind of like weird, funky color in there. There was some dirt in there, so I filled it with gas, shook it around, and then just drained it a little bit. That's the color of the gas that came out of the tank. It's kind of like a reddish brown. All right, so the air box and everything is on, carb is on, battery's in there. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of uh, some gas treatment in here just before we start, just because Anytime a motor hasn't been running a long time, I just like to throw some, this is like a seafoam equivalent. I just like to run that in there. So let's see what happens here. Hopefully it starts. All right, so I wasn't getting any power and I found this fuse in the back was blown. So I replaced the fuse. Boom. Boom. Got power. Let's try this again. It's running pretty good right now, but the engine's making a knocking noise. 
and I was concerned. I used a stethoscope and I can tell it's coming from up here, which is where the clutch is. So I'm hoping that if I adjust this here, right here, maybe if I adjust the clutches, it'll go away. I mean, this quad has such low hours, I can't imagine anything being worn out inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. I'll start it up real quick and show you the noise. Try turning the idle down and adjusting that and hopefully it'll fix it. So after playing with the adjustment on the auto clutch, I was able to get the chatter to soften up a little bit. But from what I was reading on forums, this is just the nature of the beast with these auto clutches, at least on the 250EX. The sounds that were coming from it were pretty typical and I was comfortable leaving it be. There was only one last thing to do before we test drive this thing, and that's to put on some new side panels that were missing when I received the quad. This will spruce up the machine and make it look like it's brand new when we give it back to the customer. All right, guys, so this thing is done. It came out really nice. It's super clean. I did adjust the free play in the clutch, and I also lowered the idle, and it reduced that knocking sound. The good news is I did some research, and the 250EX apparently is notorious for making sounds from the clutch. So considering that this quad has such low hours, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, and it runs so good. It doesn't make any sounds when it's running. I think everything's fine. You really barely even notice it. I think it was just... Very very apparent because I had the idle set too high. You know, obviously I'm gonna be sensitive to stuff like that because I just put the quad together and did work on it and it's not even my quad. So things like that are just nature of the beast, I think in this case. And um, it took me a little bit off guard at, at start, but this thing's ready to rock and roll. Check this thing out. What did I do wrong here? Check this thing out. Starts up no problem. Sounds a little better than it did before. So this is a five speed semi-automatic. So there's no clutch. But it's actually surprising. It surprised me how much power it has. I mean, you could have some fun with this bike. Even if you're used to bigger bikes. Let's see if we can get a nice long one. Oh, you can't see shit.
Well guys, sometimes that's just how it be in the YouTube life. You set up a camera and the shot just sucks. I thought it'd be kind of cool to include some of the follies and stuff that I didn't include in these original videos when I first put them out a few years ago. This was a much shorter repair video, but I do get requests on mid-sized ATVs and kids quads pretty frequently. So I figured it was worth posting this video, making a short edit for you guys. If you did like this video, please let me know in the comments section below. So we took a quad that had been sitting for about 10 years and with a little bit of elbow grease, we got it running like brand new. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. So if you're interested in helping me reach that goal of 100,000 subscribers, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And also, if you're interested in supporting the channel even further, there is the option to join. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. And until the next video, guys, peace out. Pass the Matty J test. Sure does. <laughs>